Hi, my name is Tom. I'm an Ableton Certified Trainer. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the ways that you can come up with more interesting chord progressions using the built-in tools in Ableton Live. So to start us off, I've got a really just kind of basic beat here that we're gonna use as the backbone to just build some chords on top of. So it sounds a bit like this. Very straightforward. Um, I also have this electric piano uh, loaded up here. That is just gonna work as a, a really sort of simple sound to use to hear our chords. So the first thing that we're gonna use is a new device in Live 12.2, and this is available in Live Intro, Standard, and Suite. Um, it's not installed by default in Live, so you will have to go to the Packs section and then look for Expressive Chords. If it's not already installed, you can go to your available pack section and you should be able to find it there to install it. Inside the Expressive Chords, I'm gonna load up this native Expressive Chords device. There are a number of presets, we're gonna see those in a moment, but first let's just take a quick look at the basic device itself and how it works. So essentially the way Expressive Chords works is we have these banks of different kinds of chords. You can see I've got all these kind of blocks here and each one of these is a different chord. I can click to trigger that chord. Or I can play notes on uh, either on my typing keyboard here, or if I've got a MIDI controller, I can play notes to trigger those chords. Again, here on my typing keyboard, I can do that as well. So each note along the keyboard, well, not every note, but there's a selection of notes along the keyboard that are mapped to different chords. Below this, we have a couple controls that affect how the chord is sort of played back. So the tilt control balances the lower notes versus the higher notes in the chord. So you'll hear if I turn this all the way to the left and I play a chord, you can hear we're getting like much more of the lower notes, the velocity of the higher notes is, is lower down. If I turn this all the way to the other side, we're hearing those higher notes in the chord a lot more than the lower notes. I'm just gonna set this to zero right in the middle so we're getting even balance across the chord. You can invert the chord here as well, so. Yeah, as I turn that up, what that does is it takes lower notes in the chord and moves them up an octave. You can have the chord strummed, which can sound really nice. And then we also have various articulations related to the strum, which we can see if we open up this tab here and go over to the articulation editor. If I add some strum, I can switch between various articulations that kind of tr control how that strum is articulated. switch between those as different sort of uh, ways that the chord is played. We're not gonna spend too much time focusing on these here. You can explore those and, and find sort of interesting ways to add uh, interest and depth to your chords. But for now, we're actually just gonna work with the kind of chord palettes themselves to come up with an interesting chord progression. So what you can do in the expressive chords is if you hit the hot swap button over here, that opens up all of the expressive chords presets. And you can see there's a whole bunch of them. These are all collections of chord progressions labeled for different styles. So like 90s R&B, art rock, chill house. So for example, let's try chill house. If I click that to load up the chill house preset, you can hear I've got a particular set of chords. Let's load up cool jazz. We've got a slightly different set of chords. And so the different preset banks are gonna contain different kinds of chords. And you can see up in the top left of the device here, the name of the chord that is being triggered. You can also switch over to this uh, piano interface where when you play a chord, you can see what the notes are in that chord. So there's these two sort of different interfaces that you can work with. Now, from this point, it's kind of just a matter of playing around with these chord palettes and finding combinations of chords that you like. So I'm gonna just trigger this beat and experiment. We're in this cool jazz preset at the moment. We'll give that a go. See if we can come up with some interesting chords. Cool. So there's something interesting. There's lots of chords in these banks to, to play around with. So definitely sort of explore and, and try out all the different chords. But now what I can do is I can use the capture button up at the top here to capture what I've just played. I'll open up this clip. Let's expand this and just make sure I've got the right bit captured here. And 
if I need to go in and quantize my bad playing. So Command Shift U. What you'll notice though, is that the MIDI that we've captured here is actually just single notes. So we're only playing single notes into the device and then the device is taking those single notes and turning them into chords. And you'll see here, I can grab these notes. I'll turn on the MIDI preview. And if I move them up or down, you can hear how each note has a different corresponding chord. So you can go in and edit these here as well. But you might want to actually see the chords laid out as MIDI. So maybe you can go in and transform this further, add variations, change some things up. So there's a little sort of technique that we need to use here, which is we're going to create a new MIDI track. So I'm on a Mac, it's going to be Command Shift T or Control Shift T if you're on a PC. And on this MIDI track, we can set the input of this MIDI track to receive MIDI from the track that we have our chords on. In this case, it's this electric track. Now, if I arm this track and record, what it's going to do is it's going to record the output of that expressive chords device into this MIDI clip. So now what I can do is I can take this MIDI clip, drag it across back to my electric track, and then I want to just make sure that I disable this expressive chords device. I'm going to leave it there in case I want to come back and try some other chords. But if I'd left it on and I play this here, things could get a bit weird. Because now it's trying to trigger all these various different chords from the notes that I've captured here. So I just want to make sure that I turn that off. But now I should hear... exactly as uh, they came out of that expressive chords device, I've now recorded those and I've got the MIDI notes that I can go in and edit to change up this chord progression and try something a little bit different. One thing that's worth just kind of being aware of here is that the notes and the chords that come out of the expressive chords device aren't mapping to your key in live. So you may be aware that you have this sort of global key and scale that you can set here. Uh, the chord progressions that exist are not necessarily restricted to a particular key. Some of them might be in different keys. So you might need to just figure out what key the particular chord progression you've captured is in. There's a number of different ways that you can do that. One thing I like to do is just sort of load up a simple sound onto a MIDI track here, and I'll play the chords. Uh, I need to just turn off the MIDI input here so I'm not receiving, still receiving the MIDI from the electric track. I want to be able to play MIDI. Now, while these chords are playing, I can look for a note that feels like the root note of my key. So there I'm playing the note of D. So these chords are probably going to be in the key of D. I'm going to go back to this MIDI clip and I'll set it to be in the key of D minor, I'm going to assume. Now that I've got these chords, I can make them a little bit more interesting by creating some variations and inversions in the chords. So one really simple thing to do is to take these chords, and I've got two bars of these same chords, and move certain notes up or down an octave just by holding shift and pressing up or down on the keyboard. You can see I've moved that D up an octave, and it'll move the F up an octave as well. So you can hear, I've got the same notes in that chord, but by creating an inversion, it's created a slightly different kind of feel or a vibe to that chord. Let's do that with all these other chords as well. Maybe we can try moving some things down an octave as well. And so you can hear how kind of relatively quickly I can take what was a sort of repeating one bar chord progression and turn it into more of a two chord, a two bar chord progression with a bit of variation to it. Okay, so that's one technique that we can use to create interesting chords. And again, there's lots of depth that you can explore there with all the different presets for the expressive chords device. Let's try a slightly more sort of experimental way of, of creating some chords here. We're going to use some of Live's built-in uh, MIDI effects to generate some chords on the fly. So we'll go over to the MIDI effects device here and load up a couple MIDI effects. We're going to load up the chord device. We're going to load up the random device. 
and we'll load up the scale device. So let's walk through each of these devices in turn and sort of talk about what they're doing. I'll turn off the randomness scale for now. So the first one is the chord device. What this does is I can play a single note and it's gonna turn it into a chord. So for example, I'm gonna just add some intervals here. And now when I play a single note, I end up with a chord. And already that can be quite an interesting way of just creating chord progressions. If you're into that kind of parallel harmony sort of vibe. But let's make this a little bit more interesting. We'll enable this random MIDI device. And what this does is this takes incoming MIDI notes and randomizes their pitch based on this chance control. So you'll see if I set this to 100%, basically what's gonna happen is every single note that's gonna come in here is gonna have its pitch totally randomized. It's gonna sound a bit horrible. So I'm playing the same chord every time there, but all the notes are just getting completely randomized. However, if I turn the scale device on, what the scale device does, and I've currently got it set to the in key mode, so it's following the key of our song, in this case D minor, it's gonna map all the incoming MIDI notes to that particular key. So what I should hear now, sounds a little bit more kind of harmonious and in the key of our song. So what we can do now is we can kind of play roughly a chord progression just by playing single notes on the keyboard or over here. And I'm gonna capture that in. So let's get our beat going. I'll hit capture again. And if we go over to our MIDI, you can hear exactly, or you can see exactly like with our expressive chords device, I've just captured single notes here. Let's quantize these as well. But what's quite interesting here is every time these notes or these chords play, you can hear that they're slightly different because the randomization is being applied every time that chord is played in real time. Again, much in the same way as we did with the expressive chords, we can capture these onto another MIDI track. So let's again set the input of that MIDI track to our electric and just record in a couple bars of this. In fact, I wanna to remember to just disable this drift device here because I don't need that at the moment and I'll just record onto the MIDI track. So you can see those notes being captured in this clip. I'm gonna just let it record for maybe eight or so bars so we get a whole bunch of variations. Maybe a little bit longer, let's do like kind of 12 bars. Okay, so you can see here I've got this sort of 12 bars of semi-random chords being generated. But now what I can do is I can take the loop of these chords and I'll loop it down to just two bars. And again, let's move this particular MIDI clip over to our electric piano track and go in and disable those MIDI effects because we don't need them anymore. Now, if I play this, By just looping up two bars at a time of these kind of randomly generated chords, I'm gonna get something that sounds a little bit more musical because it's gonna be repeating. And if you click on the loop brace here, you can use the up and down arrows to jump the loop brace by its own length. So here's another, another little interesting progression. So you can see I've got all these different kinds of chord progressions to choose from. Some sound better than others. And of course, this is all just MIDI. So we might like some chords from one, some chords from another, and we can kind of mix and match and, and use some of the same techniques we saw with the expressive chords by creating inversions, moving notes around to create sort of a little bit more custom chord progressions. Just going back to our MIDI effects as well, we can do all kinds of other things with these MIDI effects. For example, we could try different chords in our chord device here. We could set this random device to only 50%. So only 50% of the notes have their uh, pitch changed. So we can have a sort of a roughly consistent set of chords 
with random notes being added on top of that. So there's a lot of room to play and explore in these, and I'd encourage you to just experiment with this, this kind of setup. You can, of course, bring in some other MIDI devices. Maybe you bring in something like the velocity MIDI device to add random velocity offset. There's lots of room to play here. Um, but I think at this point, I'll leave the rest up to you to explore. But those have been sort of two techniques that you can use to generate and discover new chords if you're kind of feeling a bit musically stuck. So have fun with those.